There are two certainties of autumn in Iowa. The first is that falling temperatures will give way to a beautiful array of fall colors. The second is that the skies will fill with migrating birds riding the wind south to warmer climates. Whether you're looking for hawks, falcons, or eagles, from September to November, all are easily visible in the Iowa skyways. Here at the Hitchcock Nature Center, conservationists are doing much more than scanning the skies for these animals. Working with the U.S. Geological Survey, Hitchcock researchers use this time of year to catalog all different types of migrating birds and tag them for easy identification. For raptor banders, the Luss Hills are the ideal Iowa location to lure migrating birds of prey and ban them for further study. But even if you're in the right location and the weather is perfect, raptor banding is a lost cause if the birds don't cooperate. Migration should be really heavy, but today it isn't, so it's been a hard year all around. Since the Hitchcock Nature Center started its raptor banding operation in the mid-2000s, Jerry Toll has been a part of it. Formerly a member of the Nature Center's long-running Hawk Watch, Jerry estimates he's personally banded over 1,000 birds. You do something for over 20 years, you start to get a pretty good idea how things work. Well, they, all the rules, all the things that they usually work are not working this year. In order to better understand and protect North America's bird population, raptor banders such as Jerry work with the U.S. Geological Survey to tag migrating birds for study. It's a process that requires enticing, collecting, tagging, charting, and ultimately releasing various hawks, falcons, owls, and other birds that fly by. For the Hitchcock Nature Center, that generally means a few specific species. Well, the, there's the big three, uh, red-tailed hawks, Cooper's hawks, and sharp shins. Uh, at night, we ban solid owls. That makes up the bulk of, of the birds that we uh, banned here. This is the first year, it's a hatch year bird, uh, which means it's first year of life, and the way I can tell that. All the birds banded at the Hitchcock Nature Center are commonly referred to as raptors or birds of prey, meaning they normally feed on other animals and smaller birds. So the first part of the banding process is setting a lure, which in this case means pigeons and starlings. While these birds are in some danger, between the nets that surround them, the lure wiring attached to their feet, and the quick collection time of the raptors, the lure birds are by and large safe. Working in tandem with the Hitchcock Lodge Watchtower, Jerry and his banding peers wait patiently for a bird to take the bait. And when one ultimately does, things get exciting in a hurry. The main thing is to be concerned about the feet, because if they grab a hold of you, you're in trouble. Even with proper procedure in mind, Jerry still takes a moment to admire the raptors. Oh, this is a beautiful bird. This red-tailed hawk is the first successful capture of the day. And after resetting the lure, Jerry is ready to band and measure the young bird. So that's a red-tailed hawk. And this is a juvenile, because the tail does not have that brick red color. No matter hawk, owl, or falcon, raptors are all banded and measured in similar fashion. Inside the shed, Jerry uses an assortment of scales and tools to catalog each bird, starting by determining the size of the band for the raptor's leg. I think this is going to be a 7B. So, nope. I'm going to have to go to the larger size. Red-tailed hawks are actually rather docile birds while being held, but for their safety, as well as the banders, Safe confinement is necessary to determine accurate weight. 1377, yeah. Measure talon and leg length, as well as applying the band. This is misleading, I'm not hurting the bird. If it did, we would not be doing any banding. The banding lab would say, we can't do this because, it, because it's dangerous, it's harmful to the bird. So everything is designed for the safety and, and uh, uh, protection of the bird. Finally, before the bird can be freed of its confinement, there's counting and measuring its 12 tail feathers. Okay, coming out. Now that the bird is no longer restrained, Jerry has only a couple measurements remaining, starting with the wing, which helps determine between species and subspecies. This is probably the most important measurement I'll take. It's called the wing cord. It's from the wrist 
of the bird to the longest primary feather, longest flight feather. The last assessments required are the length of the bird's beak and overall health check by inspecting its fat stores. Now all that's left is letting the hawk go. Jerry repeats this process over and over throughout the early fall, banding as many hawks, owls, and falcons as possible. Altogether, the banding process takes just under eight minutes. While it might be stressful for the birds, banding and collecting population data helps conservationists protect the animals. And while Jerry does frequently band raptors without assistance, he prefers working with other banders as it speeds up the process and helps find more birds. Pretty day. It's usually when I catch a hawk, it's nice to have a second person here luring because our chances of catching another hawk is, is like almost 50% higher. Sally Rakin is a fellow raptor bander in Pottawatomie County. While she hasn't been banding as long as Jerry, she is just as skilled in tagging and luring. Sally assures worried birders that the luring technique involving nets does not harm the raptors. The net does not harm the birds. I mean, sometimes they get snarled in there pretty good. Sometimes it'll ruffle up their feathers. But I've never had the net actually harm a bird. The little sharp shins, can, they can get their head and one wing all the way through, but um, never had an a injury in the mist nets. As much joy as Jerry and his peers take from their banding work, they know how lucky they are to have the opportunity. Because if it wasn't for the Lus Hills, the Hitchcock Raptor banding efforts would simply not exist. There's really nothing else in the Midwest uh, states that is doing this. And that's mostly because of geography. It, it doesn't pay to have a migration banding station any place where there is not a concentration of hawks in migration. And the Lus Hills provides that. <laughs> 